Hey everyone, and welcome to another video here at Whiteboard Doctor. Thanks for joining us today. Quick disclaimer before we move on, none of these videos are intended to be acted upon as medical advice. Please pause the video here and read the disclaimer in its entirety before moving on. Channel plug, here at Whiteboard Doctor, our mission is to bring you interesting, relevant, and understandable medical education for all types of lifelong learners, trainees, and practitioners. If you want to follow along, we do have a lovely subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner of all the videos. Don't forget to hit that like button. And lastly, if you'd like to support us outside of viewing our videos, we have several ways in which you can do that linked in the video description and pinned comment. Stay well, keep learning, and back to the Welcome video. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to start a series of videos we're putting out on acid-base disorders in medicine. These videos obviously are open for anyone and everyone just interested in learning more about how their body uh, functions and how it regulates its acid-base status, but they're going to be particularly targeting, you know, those students or trainees or clinicians, providers, nurses, respiratory therapists, all those people that work within the healthcare um, industry or are training to work in the healthcare industry. They're going to be a little more curtailed towards those individuals. So this is going to be video one in the series, and this video is going to be an introduction to acid-base disorders. We're going to lay out what acidemia is, what alkalemia is, bicarb and hydrogen ions, how the body buffers the acid base status, and all those types of things. Um, it's a little bit of a piggyback off of an arterial blood gas video we put out previously. We will link that in this video's description, so definitely check that out too. With no further ado, acid base disorders and introduction. So why are we talking about this? Well, the body works very, very hard to maintain its acid-base homeostasis, all right? And homeostasis is kind of that regulatory normal. The reason it does this is because, you know, a body that is too acidic or acidemic, the proteins can't function appropriately. The enzymes can't function appropriately. You actually can die from acidemia because at that pH, with all that extra hydrogen ions, your body can't function in its normal manner. The same thing happens when it's alkalotic or alkalemic, all right? And that's kind of too much base. And the body functions a little better with alkalosis to a degree, but once it gets super alkalotic, once there's way too much base, the same thing happens. All those proteins, all those enzymes, you know, the normal medications you take cannot function in environments in the body that are more acidotic or alkalotic than usual. And again, it can lead to death. Um, it also can lead to kind of multi-organ system dysfunction and all those types of things. So how do we define these? So you'll hear us saying both acidosis and acidemia, all right? Those are kind of two different things, right? One has the end emia, that's an M right there. The other one has the end Osis, alkalosis, acidosis, all right? These mean slightly different things. So acidemia, E-M-I-A, or alkalemia, means that the blood pH is either acidotic or alkalotic. So for acidemia, the blood pH is less than 7.35, all right? And that's acidemia. Whereas alkalemia, where it's too basic, the pH is greater than 7.45, which, you know, shows you that the normal, NL normal pH of the body is 7.35 to 7.45. That's the normal, all right? So acidemia, pH of less than 7.35. Alkalemia, pH of greater than 7.45. This is slightly different than acidosis or alkalosis, right? Emia versus osis. Acidosis essentially just means that you're bicarbonate, which we're going to get into this, but can be a measure of your acid base status, is less than 24, right? So NL, a normal bicarbonate, is about 24. So if it's less than 24, you're acidotic. But that doesn't necessarily mean you're acidemic, because your body can compensate for its acidosis and maintain a normal pH in the blood. So if your bicarb is less than 24, you are acidotic. You do have too much acid. But whether you're acidemic or not depends on if your body was able to buffer that acidosis and keep the blood pH normal. All right, same thing with alkalosis. Your bicarb is greater than 24 because bicarb, HCO3, this is a base, right? So if it is less than 24, there's not enough base, 
which means you're acidotic. If it is greater than 24, there's too much base, which means you're alkalotic, or acidosis or alkalosis. And again, just like with acidosis, alkalosis, even if your bicarb is greater than 24, if you have a normal pH, you're not alkalemic because your blood pH is normal, because your body buffered and compensated for that high bicarb to keep the pH normal, to maintain that homeostasis. All right, so does that make sense? Acidemia versus acidosis and alkalemia versus al alkalosis. It, it's somewhat kind of teasing hairs, you know, and these are just kind of definitions, but it is important to get your verbiage right when talking, right? If you're rounding or presenting a patient or thinking about a patient, a patient can be acidotic and not acidemic, or they can be both acidotic and acidemic. One, the emia is a matter of the blood pH, and the acidotic or the acidosis is a matter of bicarb. Same with alkalosis, alkalemia. Let us know in the comments if that doesn't make sense. We're happy to explain it further. Uh, but those were kind of the, some of the intro definitions we wanted you to be aware of. So what kind of is um, acidosis, acidemia, alkalosis, alkalemia? What happens? Well, as many of you may remember from chemistry, hydrogen ions govern the acidity of a solution. All right. The human body is no different, right? So the human body, the hydrogen ions, whether there's too many of them, meaning it's an acidic solution, or too few of them, meaning it's a um, uh, basic solution, the human body's the same. For those of you who remember chemistry, Henderson-Hasselbalch, um, there's this equation, the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation from chemistry that kind of teases out blood pH and its kind of proportionality to um, weak acids or weak bases. Um, we luckily don't need to know that for medicine, so we're not going to dive into that. But the kind of conceptual thing to remember is that hydrogen ions govern the acidity of a solution. Too much hydrogen ions means you're acidic. Too few hydrogen ion ions means you're basic, right? And alkalosis is basic. Acidosis is acidic. Same thing, acidemia is acidic. Alkalemia is basic, all right? So this up here is too many hydrogen ions. This down here is too few hydrogen ions. So how does the body go about buffering and trying to keep that blood pH normal, right? Because we talked about the blood pH is what is most important. If the blood pH is normal, even if you're acidotic or alkalotic, your proteins and enzymes and everything are still going to function normal because the pH they're experiencing is normal. Whereas if your blood pH is abnormal, that's when your proteins and enzymes start to struggle. Um, but the body works very, very hard to ensure that even if you're acidotic or alkalotic, that you're not acidemic or alkalemic. And the three main buffering systems are, one, the bones, actually. So the bones have a large amount of bicarb, this HCO3. This is bicarbonate, right? And we talked about bicarbonate. Bicarbonate is a base, and it works to buffer the amount of acid, the amount of hydrogen ions, right? It's a base that's negatively charged. Hydrogen ions are positively charged. And we're going to kind of get into how bicarb buffers this. And then bones have a large amount of phosphate as well. So your bones actually regulate the acid-base status of the blood by using its bicarb and phosphate to buffer the amount of hydrogen ions floating around in the blood. In addition to that, there's intracellular buffers. All right, so inside human cells, there's proteins, phosphates, all sorts of ions, right, which are charged particles that can grab onto those hydrogen ions and get rid of them so that your blood pH remains normal. All right, and that's intracellular proteins, phosphates, uh, as we said, all sorts of stuff. So your blood pH. The last and kind of the main one is the bicarbonate carbonic acid buffer system. And this is by far and away the, the kind of main system, and it's the one we focus on medically. We wrote that down here. This is the one we kind of focus on medically when we're evaluating acid-based arrangements is the bicarbonate carbonic acid buffering system because this is the vast, vast majority of buffering that goes on uses this system, whereas the other two systems, bones and intracellular buffers, is much more negligible. And what this is is this equation here. So it uses a hydrogen ion right? And this, remember, hydrogen ions govern how acidic our blood gets. And then it uses bicarbonate. And what's happening in your body all over the place constantly 
is that bicarb and hydrogen are latching onto each other and forming this carbonic acid, H2CO3, right? And this H2CO3 is then broken down into water and CO2 that we can breathe off, carbon dioxide, all right? So this is a constantly happening thing that's happening all over the body. We're going to get into this equation much more in one of the future videos, but this buffering system, essentially, if there's too much hydrogen ions, then the equation, let's get out a highlighter. So if there's too many hydrogen ions, the equation will go this way, right? And it'll get rid of those hydrogen ions by combining with bicarbonate, going to carbonic acid, then going to water and CO2, and you'll breathe off the CO2 to get rid of it. All right, and that buffers the amount of hydrogen ions. Whereas if there are not a enough hydrogen ions, right? So again, too much hydrogen ions, you're going to be acidotic, but then you'll buffer it and the blood pH will remain normal so you're not acidemic, okay? Too few hydrogen ions, the equation shifts this way, right? Because there's gonna be too much bicarb. These are kind of interacting. So if there's too few hydrogen ions, the equation will go towards the area that has too much, right? And if there's too few hydrogen, there's too much over here, so it goes to the left. And what that then does is it takes water and CO2, breaks it down into, or combines it into carbonic acid, and then breaks it down into hydrogen ions, so that, again, you're buffered, so that you don't get alkalemic, right? So too few hydrogen ions means there's not enough acid, there's too much base being bicarb, so you'd be alkalotic, but then this equation, this buffering system in your body says, hey, we need more hydrogen ions, so it breaks down water and CO2 into more hydrogen ions to make sure that blood pH stays normal. So it's this constant back and forth that's going on, you know, this way as well as this way, that creates the right amount of hydrogen ions and bicarbonate using water and carbon dioxide, which are two things that is plentiful in the body and that the body can get rid of, that buffers the blood so that you can try to maintain a normal pH so that you're not acidemic or alkalemic even if you developed an acidosis or alkalosis. All right, does that make sense? That is kind of the summary of the introduction, is kind of introducing these buffer systems and starting to understand what drives acidity and alkalinity, the definitions of acidemia, alkalemia versus acidosis and alkalosis, and then kind of the main equation that the body uses to buffer and that we look at medically when evaluating acid-base status. So that's going to be the end of video one. We are going to put out a series of videos that gets kind of into more and more complexity please check those out. We're going to link all of them in the video description. Um, it's going to be kind of our acid base series. And if you kind of follow them in sequential order, by the end of it, hopefully, the goal for us at least is that you have a good grasp on acid base disorders in medicine because it's something that, number one, is very important for patient care. Number two, you know, lots of attendings and staff like to ask questions on it all the time. And number three is pertinent to pretty much almost every patient encounter you'll come across. So, let us know what thoughts, comments, questions you have below. Thanks for checking out the video. Subscribe, hit the bell button, follow along, check out our other videos, all that good stuff. We appreciate you all. Stay well, keep learning, and we will see you next time.